This project, you know, has been a long time in the making. I think Nora Guthrie first contacted us 20 years ago almost, and she thought her her father would have got a kick out of us, would have liked us, that we were somewhat kindred spirits, so to speak, um, which to us was a huge honor. Nora gave us the privilege of going through the archives and selecting some lyrics to use. And I think the original idea was try to find some things that specifically suited us. And out of that original process, Blackout and Shipping Up to Boston came to be. With those songs, there was a bunch of other ones. There's always been the idea of, oh, maybe we could do some more of those Guthrie songs. Maybe we can do some more of those Guthrie songs. So when the idea came up recently about taking a look at it as a fully formed project based around those lyrics, it was an exciting idea. This is trying to do something totally different with the lyrics. Not necessarily how Woody would have done them, but just trying to do them from like a stripped down, more raw, more to that period. lyrics are so inspiring and to take these lyrics and try to make them into songs that we think Woody would be happy with but that are also Dropkick Murphys has been a lot of fun and good for us as a band. I mean Woody Guthrie's, you know, he's the original punk, you know, he was, he went against the grain, he fought the good fight, he spoke up, he sung about his beliefs, he, his priorities were not, you know, commercial success, it was, his priorities were his message and what he believed in. She's upside down, she's broke apart, and getting worse every day. A working man's hand is the hardest card in the whole damn deck to play. There's the body of work that exists, that everybody knows, that shapes the public persona of somebody, but we're talking about, like, scraps of paper with just little ideas on them and stuff and it gives you a completely different idea of a more complete person. Can you worship the rich man that sees poor folks and refuses them? And the common thread that I see through everything was this love for people and this understanding of the universal truth that there is no one person fundamentally better than another person. Two sixes upside down I think that a big part of it is stepping outside a comfort zone, not writing what would be typical Dropkick Murphy's music, coming up with a way of writing the music to the lyrics that would uh, do the guy proud. Time in a hard rock jail, it's a long time gone by. It's a time in this jail and I still got nine. So in the beginning of this, it felt nice to, to know that the lyrics were already written, and I think we figured that it might be it might be easier to tackle. But it's been pretty difficult, <laughs> in a good way, not in a, not in a bad way. After 26 or whatever years it's been, it's really nice to be able to just fuck around and change it up, you know. Well, the crooks they work, we gotta work. We wanted to get into that kind of small town America, Tulsa, like in the Woody's roots and not, you know, be doing it in New York City or Boston. I mean, as far as the recording of the album goes, we didn't use any amps, it's all acoustic. Everything was up to a microphone and let it go. Just after 26 years as a band, just try to do something different. I'm motivated by reading what he had to write and inspired by him, you know, one man and a guitar. It was powerful stuff, you know. Not twice. 